Let's speak to Christopher Gunnis. He's the spokesman for the United Nations Relief and Works Agency, or UNRWA. That's the agency that's responsible for providing services to Palestinian refugees. Joining us from London, Chris Gunnis, good to have you with us. Can Thank we first you. talk about the uh, UNRWA itself? Because we understand that the agency suspended services to Palestinian refugees as a result of what's going on in Ayn al-Halwa. Can you tell us about the status of the suspension? Well, yes, I'm afraid that we have had to suspend. And of course, that is under constant review, given the dire situation in the camp where we have significant protection concerns. Let's just look at the facts. Nine civilians have been injured. There's anecdotal uh, information that a child has been killed. Three of our schools have been entered by armed groups, putting in jeopardy the education of five and a half thousand children. And large parts of the camp are being denied access to our health facilities. We have two primary health clinics in the camp, and that is why we are calling on all the armed actors inside the camp to honour and respect obligations under international law to take all possible and necessary measures to protect civilians and civilian life, and that includes our unarmed humanitarian workers, workers for UNRWA and other UN organisations, and to respect the inviolability of our premises. What impact, though, has the suspension had on the Palestinian refugees themselves? Well, it's been absolutely devastating. Imagine one of the most economically disadvantaged places in the Middle East, which is what Ain il Hilway is, where 55,000 registered Palestine refugees are pretty much wholly dependent on the services provided by UNRWA. We have eight schools. As I said, three of those have been entered by armed groups. We have two primary health facilities, and we have other relief and social services installations inside the camp. So things are dire, and with the suspension of our services, things have got significantly more dire. I understand that you say that the suspension is in review as the situation evolves, but can you give us a timeline of when you think that you will resume operations? Because as we know, uh, the majority of refugees, in fact, in these camps really rely on the services of UNRWA. They do indeed. These are, in many cases, life-saving services. Let's not put too fine a point on it. And it's impossible for us to say. We don't know. These clashes sometimes last for hours, but in the past they've gone on for days and sometimes weeks, which is why we're saying that there has to be significant political action. We deal with the consequences of political failure. We see it in our work every day, but we are just a humanitarian organization. The political actors have to bring significant pressure to bear. And let's be clear, we're not just talking about the short term. Palestine refugees in Ain el Hilway are experiencing something which is emblematic, if you like, of the Palestinian experience across the Middle East. In Gaza, though the situation is different, there is a community which is effectively blockaded. There's economic deprivation. There isn't a political future. The same is true of the Palestine refugees living under occupation in the West Bank. The same is, in a sense, true of what's going on in the desperate camps in Syria, which is why we say there has to be a just and lasting resolution for the Palestine refugees, because without that, we're going to see continued instability in one of the world's most unstable regions, which is a source of refugees, refugee flows into the rest of the world, which is why I think the clashes in Ain il Hillway today have great significance for the international community as a whole, and I hope that they will sit up and listen and take action, because the clashes, the violence are affecting too many people, and they must end. And Palestinian refugees, in fact, in Lebanon, particularly face discrimination when it comes to employment policies uh, by Lebanon itself. But let me ask you about uh, politics for just a moment. I'd like to get your reaction on this because on a visit to Beirut last week, the Palestinian Authority President Abbas uh, discussed with Lebanese officials, specifically the President Michel Aoun, uh, saying uh, that the Lebanese army has the right to raid Palestinian refugee camps. That statement must concern you coming from a Palestinian Authority President. Let me be clear, as a humanitarian organization, we have to work with all the parties on the ground. And I say all the parties. And it ill behoves me to say on Al Jazeera live that we have a problem with any of those parties. They know that they have to break, bring significant political progress if we're going to see the kind of clashes that we're now seeing in Ain el Hillway avoided. So please, let's have political action. We speak from a humanitarian perspective, but this uh, violence has to end because too many people have suffered already. Uh, Chris Gunness, we'll leave it there. Thank you for speaking to us from Thank London. You. We appreciate it.